The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled are actress Alyssa Steck and filmmaker Tamar Salibian. Actress, dancer, singer, Alyssa Steck was born and raised in Michigan. She studied communications and psychology at the University of Michigan at Ar uh, Ann Arbor. And were you interested in the theater at school at that time? Yeah, I actually started out in the dance department at Michigan, and then I transferred into the liberal arts program. Um, so I continued to do, um, I did theater and dance the entire time I was in school. So I've always, even since I was little, I've was been I was dancing say, since I was like four. Were so. you a dan Were you going to dance school when you were a, yes. a little girl? Yeah, I had always wanted to. And I, in fact, I, my neighbor who went, she was, um, you know, that lived down the street was older than me and she was going. And I remember I kept asking my mom, when can I take dance class? But you had to be four to take at the studio. But what did you take? Um, ta I started with tap and uh -huh. then I took ballet and jazz. And by the time I was in middle school, I was, dancing every day after school for three or four hours but and then what on the weekends. You, what kind of dancer did you want to be? Um, you know, <laughs> it's, that's interesting. I didn't want, it wasn't, I, I never had, even though I always went to see like the ABT and New York City right. Ballet, I knew that that wasn't what I wanted to uh, do. I loved uh, to jazz dance. I loved, you know, I used to dance around to Free to Be Me and You and, um, you know. And so you were more free. Yes, and, and I wanted to do musical theater, I wanted to do Broadway, I wanted to be an actress, I wanted to be in movies. I mean, it was the whole thing, oh, you know. Oh, boy. It From was the time I was there. little. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <When you were> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you moved to New York City. Were they ready for you? Did uh, they wait well, for you? of course, I thought I was going to get off the plane. And I remember my first audition was like the first day I got there was for Guys and Dolls on Broadway. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go, and I'm going to get it, and I'm going to be discovered. And, you know, but obviously, it's a little, you know, by the time I actually did get my Broadway show, it was, you know, further down the line. But I I got within a couple weeks after being there. I got a European tour. Um, I was going to ask you about the European tour. Yeah, that came right away. In yeah, your yeah. Although I remember when, because I thought when I, I was going to get Guys and Dolls on Broadway right away. So after like you know a couple weeks, I was getting discouraged already, and I was like, oh, I haven't gotten anything. And then <laughs> I got um, the European tour of My Fair Lady, and then oh, you did. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I came back, and then I went out again with um, the European tour of Forty Second Street. So it was a great way to see Europe and perform, and I was young, and you know, so it was fun. That was great. What major cities did you go to? When we went to, we went all over Germany mostly. So oh, we were in Hamburg and Berlin oh. and... Um, Did you do England or no, France? Mm -mm. Oh, it was Ger just... Just oh. uh, all Germany and uh, we were, yeah, actually it was all German cities, but we were, when we were in Hamburg, we got to travel to Amsterdam. So you and, did. Yeah, we did a lot of traveling. And then when we were in... Um, where were uh, South? When we were in Munich, it was close to. We traveled. It's so long ago, um, but we traveled <laughs> to um, Salzburg and to so Budapest, and you know, which was a great way to. And then you, you know, lived in Tokyo for a while too. Yeah, yeah, I did Tokyo Disney. That was my junior. That was before I moved to New York. That was actually when I was still in college. So you really ran the gamut yeah. of being the actress, dancer. Was it all dance stuff or music? Um, it was dance and music. Um, I, you know, and theater. I mean, I did acting stuff. I mean, I did my first play when I was in sixth grade. And, Do you you know, si did you take singing lessons? I did. I did a lot of singing lessons and um, that was always something. I was. Al they have auditions in New York where you're, you either go for, when you audition for chorus, it's either dancer who sings or singer who dances. Oh, that way? Yeah. So I would always win on the dancer. So you dance first and you get through all these rounds of, you know, uh, of, I wondered of auditions. about that. Yeah. But then you have to know how to do everything. Yes. By the time you get on stage, you have to dance, dance and sing, sing and, and act. act. Exactly. And then in cabaret, you had to play an instrument. So. Oh, and then you had to play an instrument. You were just telling me yeah, about right. that. But um, you were Rockette first. Yes, I did the Rockette. So I did these European How tours and some that? regional theater. And then I just went and auditioned. I'd always wanted to be a Rockette. And, um, I, they, you know, they have the auditions in the backstage. And I went. And 
it was a big, um, you know, there are hundreds of girls and you go in the morning and you stand in line, you get your number and you audition and then it's like a three day process. You audi Dance auditions are like eight hours, you know. But um, here you were, did you have to be a certain height? Mm -hmm. You had to be... Um, Before, right when you walk in, they measure you. You have to put on your, your socks, they measure you and some girls are like on their tippy toes. You have to be at least five, six and a half uh, to five, ten. So, um, and tell us what the Rockettes are. They're, um, uh, I, how would you what describe it? What is it, a dance them? company? Yeah, they're, kind yeah, of? it's a dance company, and they're, they, they're, uh, gosh, uh, how would you coin that? I guess they're, li we're line performers, you I was going to say, they're precision. Precision, thank way, you. Right. Thank is you, it, precision it dancers. Precision, precision yeah. dancers, yeah. That's but do you guess. act, too, or is there someone um, acting in front of the dancers? Have you ever seen them? Yes, yes, I have, yeah. but okay. I want my audience, audience to know. Okay, <laughs> yeah, some people, I know, I forget the people, because you're, if you're from New York, but there are some people that don't know what the Rockettes are, even though they're all, they're kind of all over now, but, um, yeah, we're precision dancers, and there is a whole, like with the Christmas show, um, you know, there's the Santa Claus, and you have the other dancers, mm -hmm. and there's little storylines, and, and yeah, stuff. themes, and, and now they're, because they used to, the Rockettes started out in the 30s, and they used to open up for movies at the Radio City, like actual films, right. or they'd open for musical acts, and they're starting to do more of that. The, the Rockettes are really broadening. That's their, fabulous. Yeah. And, and then you went, and then you did cabaret yes and then from so there so was that your first big big broadway yeah i had done a lot of regional theater and that yeah. was my first big broadway show and it was great it was uh, you know i found out in two days later i i went on the road first to do the national tour and you know i found out in two days later i had to leave to go on the road for six months and then i came back and they <laughs> offered me a job on broadway so and so that was the revival that got the tony award yes which yes. was what directed by sam mendes mm -hmm. and uh, rob marshall did the yes. choreography yes who did you work with them but yes they did they sam mendes Mendez would come and see the show and give us notes and um, Rob Marshall I worked with a lot he uh, was also the co-director and choreographer and he um, he would come more than Sam came a couple times but Rob came more frequently for the upkeep of the show and he would watch the show mm -hmm. and give us notes and you know and I actually um, you know ha had to dance for him by myself um, you know for him to you know let to, so because I was going on to the Broadway stage. So he so. did Chicago? Chicago the movie and um, he just did the Geisha um, yeah, memoirs, memoirs of, of the Geisha. Geisha yeah, yeah he's yeah. brilliant and he's Were great. Were you in either one of those? No no I wasn't I actually did audition for Chicago um, the movie <laughs> movie. They were amazing dancers, but, but he's so great. How hard was cabaret compared to dancing with the Rockettes? Because here you were moving from dancing every day for right. an hour and a half to cabaret, right. which was, how long was that? That was a couple of hours. Two and a half hours. <coughs> um, you know, Rockettes, because we had to do so many shows um, in a day, we would do up to, sometimes just two shows, but up to five shows a day, and each show was an hour and a half. It was just physically grueling. You know, you just were exhausted. Um, but cap Cabaret was different kind of grueling, because it's a longer show, and there was the physical aspect, and it's also a very... Um, emotional show. I mean, you really take a journey as the actor on the show. Um, and you had to play all the roles, you said? You I covered as all a, the, yes, as a, a swing, swing. Is mm -hmm. that what it's called? Yes. But I didn't know swing did everybody. Yeah, the swing, co <laughs> I covered um, the, the all of the um, ensemble roles and um, yeah, I, when I first got it, and I was in Chicago, and I was learning all of the tracks, plus 32 pieces of music, and um, of the clarinet music, and then all of the songs, I kept calling my husband, and I was like, hey, will you still love me if they fire me? Because I'd be trying to play the clarinet and learn all the tracks. I mean, it was just so much to learn. But you know? were there other instruments? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, everyone in the in the show played an instrument. And so you had to learn all the instruments, too? Or you no, just, just did the clarinet? No, just oh, the clarinet. I but I had to learn, and I hadn't played since middle school and I had to learn you know 32 pieces of music um, but it was a great experience and by the end I was playing solos with the clarinet and I actually really really um, enjoyed playing the clarinet it was so, amazing but there was a lot of singing in that too yeah wasn't there? And there yeah we I mean gosh I don't know how many songs but a but lot did, of singing so so did you take lessons during this time singing lessons yes I you know I took singing lessons from the time I was in oh, so New York yeah. um, but so here you are in LA now and yeah. you're doing this play, Glo yes, I, I want to talk about Pie. Glory yes, Pie. Yeah. Which is an amazing play. It's and, amazing. And you're and it was written by John and Ellen Lawler. Right. And you're the kind of center. 
the play, yes, it is about, I mean, I think that it's about my character. Yeah. I mean, but it's it's a very much an ensemble piece. Um, there are six characters and then another character who comes in. But it's just, it's got so many different elements. It's funny, but yet there's a lot of depth to it. And I immediately, when I read it, I just, not only is it a lot about, you know, my character is very close to who I am, but it's also just, it's very universal. Why you know? is she close to you? Because if you're having children? Because she's a dancer. Paula is a, a dancer. dancer. And who, she's in her 30s. And she's, you know, trying to figure out if she still can be a professional dancer. And does she want to have a family? And she's right. not sure. And then she finds out she's pregnant. And she's not really ready. And, um... And she's just kind of this neurotic type A person <laughs> who's like, you know, which I can relate to. But, um, you know, and she, her husband, they have a very, you know, sweet, real relationship. And he's really sweet. And, you know, he reminds me a lot of my husband. And, you know, it's just, the characters are just so real and fun and great. And, you know, it's you just a great play. You have two little girls. I do, a two and a half well, year old. Were you ready for them by the, in your career? Is that why um, you're talking about your character yeah, in well, Glory it was, Pie? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a big thing for women. I have a lot of friends who are actors and are in the business and having kids and when to have them and if you have them is a hard thing um, because and when I moved out to California, I thought, you know, uh, my fear was, oh, I'm just going to move to California and end up having kids and never doing acting. And so um, I, I didn't think I want, you know, my husband and I really, we grappled with it for a while and then we decided we wanted kids and we just started trying and we got pregnant right away so but your character is a dancer mm -hmm. but you don't dance on stage and you don't sing in this you're just strictly acting right well oh. i don't know if i'm supposed to reveal oh I mean, okay don't tell me I don't know we if it's come a secret. I don't think so. We I don't can know. come to the cornet and see you. <laughs> yes, it's great. But yeah, I don't I don't sing and it is me it is an acting role. It, it is, is an, an acting, acting role. role. Basically, it's that's why we are you gonna give up dancing? Um it, as my character, as, as me, no, as a person. As a person. <laughs> you know, I mean, I still dance, and it's it's been a lot harder since I've had kids. Um, but I still try to take class, and, you know, I don't know. Um, ho no, I don't want to ever have it out of my life. Because, you know, once you're a dancer and you've been a dancer your whole life, it, it is, who you know, part of who yeah. you are. So, so when you're on Glory Pie, do you cook? You're, I mean, you're this character. You're having a dinner party. Are you cooking? Do you... Yes, I mean, I mean my is character is yes. Character? She's yeah. she loves to cook, and she the Can Paula actually this. yes. The, this is our so glory pie. So yummy, so yummy. So so you actually can cook. I cook a, dessert? yes. I cook my own glory pie in this, um, which also has another reference to the play. But yes, I call this pie that I make because it's amazing. I call it glory pie, and um, they and Sweet Lady Jane made a pie. You Do know. they eat it on stage? Do you get um, to eat on stage? We don't, no, we don't really get to eat it. We do eat on stage, but we don't really get to eat the actual pie, unfortunately. But fortunately and unfortunately, five shows a weekend, I don't know if I should be eating it all, every night, but um, it's amazing pie. So, so glory pie. Yeah. It's Paula great. Stuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa Steck. Alyssa Steck. I'm Paula calling you Paula. That's okay because it's they're one and the same, That's right? That's your character <laughs> right, at right. the coronet. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for watching this part of the Joan Quinn Profiles. We'll be right back with Tom Arcelibian. <laughs> Joan Quinn and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm here with filmmaker Tamar Salibian, who was born in Iowa and raised in both Los Angeles and Boston. She has a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the Massachusetts College of Art and she worked at Harper's Magazine in New York. Then she came to LA to earn a master's in film from Cal California Institute of the Arts, Cal Arts. Uh, Tamar, your background was in photography actually. So what field um, and how did that field help you at uh, Harper's and getting to where you are? Well, basically, um, I mean, I come from a creative family. We have a lot of writers, and um, my father's a composer, a musician by training. Oh, so yeah. ever since I was little, I was in the arts, painting and, you know, drawing and such. Uh -huh. and, um, and, but I could never really figure out what it is that I wanted to do. You know, my mom tried to put me into ballet, and it never worked, it didn't stick. And, um, and so when I was in high school, photography just, I, I sort of, it was, was drawn to it. in high school? Right, right. And so um, basically I, I studied photography 
and, um, and then went to Harper's and was working as an art assistant and then working for a photography, um, like a stock photography agency. Um, but then I kind of, as I was doing my undergrad actually, before I moved to New York, I was almost a double major with film. And a lot of my films had the sort of photographic element, like there was stop motion type of, you know, like... Uh, like you were looking at a camera right. rather than having something move? Exactly, like a lot of still frames um, within the film. So there was moving images, but there's slow motion. So there was a mix between the two. Well, which were you always, did, did you want to make films? Uh, and and how, why did you go to the film department and not continue that uh, photography work? Um, I think there was just something about, um, you know, a photograph, you look, you look at it, but with a film you can sort of tell more of a story. Uh -huh. And so it was something where, I mean, even as a kid, my mom says when I was a baby, I would just sort of look out into, you know, the world and, and take everything in. And I think that sort of developed as I got older. And when, when you were at CalArt, um, how was that film department? Who was teaching there? I didn't know they had such a, a strong film department. Oh yeah, it's a great, uh, great film department. It's divided into three sections. There's animation, then there's directing, uh -huh. and then there's um, live action. Oh, we should have known right. that because it was a Disney back school. Right. Exactly, and the animation department is like it's you know the untouchable. Best. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I never took any animation <laughs> classes there. I was a big waste, but. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so within the live action department, it's very broad. You can do whatever you want to do. You can do, you know, surrealist, I don't know what film, or you can make documentaries. Uh -huh. And so I went there, I moved from New York to Los Angeles in 2001, started my uh, master's degree there. And a um, lot of local filmmakers, James Benning, teaches there and Tom Anderson who makes a lot of documentaries. And I so wondered yeah. what, this, what the faculty was like mm -hmm. and if you have a documentary teacher, yes. that really l led you into making documentaries. Is that where you wanted to be? Absolutely and I uh. went into CalArts um, knowing that I wanted to make documentary films. I kind of never really stuck to the, the fiction films too much. I so so yeah. did you work in studios? Um, well not really. I mean, now that I'm out of school, I'm working in reality television. But oh, before you then, worked, uh, you're working at what? Popular Arts Entertainment, or you worked right. there as an assistant <laughs> editor? What right. did you do there? Right. Uh, I worked on a number of pilots and some uh, History Channel TV shows and some like entertainment news shows. And then I worked on Survivor and Apprentice. Those and are Mark Burnett programs. And that was at Mark Burnett Productions. Right. And right. you were a, a logger and a transcriber. What right. does that mean? <laughs> Basically, I mean, it's very simple work. You work with the editor editors and the story editors and the producers and what we do there's a group of us and we organize the footage so that the producers and the editors can then piece everything together oh. similar to a documentary just for TV so but yeah. but with numbers how with, do you do yeah, that yeah with programs with <laughs> computer programs you just type oh. you know you type everything in and you just keep track of all of the footage you make little clips and you you know you make everything look good so that then the producers and editors can can find everything quickly so that they can piece together the episodes. But that's what you would be doing for yourself, right? right. When you're making your own movie. Right, except I don't get paid for it for myself. <laughs> Not just yet. <laughs> you were a, a logger for what, American Inve Inventor? That's what, what is I'm, that? That's what I'm working on now. It's a new show for ABC and it's um, produced by Simon Cowell who, who's one of the judges on uh, American Idol. And it's, uh, it's just this nationwide search for the biggest, the best invention and the best inventor in the country. Uh -huh. It's really interesting actually to see people with their dreams and what they want to make, you know, what, So what like do that. you get? What comes into your office? Clips of what these people say? Videotapes. Videotapes. Video we pop in the videotapes. We but type, type, type. What's on the videotape? Just footage, raw footage of, you know. Of, of me the talking to you right, or you Of talking? interviews, of um, the inventors in their houses. That's what I want Things like that. You know, the casting call, the auditions, that all oh, of the inventors bring their inventions in and they show them to the judge and their four judges. And so that's so all yeah. on, right. on tape. And then you log it or, right. or whatever you call it. Log yeah, it, log I it. guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. while you were doing this, it, um, did it actually help you make your film, or was there a difference in? Well, I started doing your these film? jobs basically after I graduated from CalArts, and so while I was at CalArts, I just worked at school, and I didn't I didn't do any of the logging stuff, and I really f wanted to focus and put a concerted effort into getting the film made. So um, I think, in retrospect, this these jobs are very helpful for a person who's trying to make their own film. So your film is called Beautiful Armenians. Yes. yes. And 
how did you cho choose the title and did you write it? Right. I am um, basically the second year when I was in CalArts, it's a three year program. So in 2002, when I was through my first year, I started to think about my own life and being someone who, whose parents are immigrants from the Middle East and who I hold on to my Armenian heritage and culture very fiercely. But I'm also, I was born in the States and I'm, I consider myself Armenian American. So basically, I wanted to sort of explore. Um, explore that concept of dual cultures and meet individuals who, like myself, are sort of maneuvering between those two cultures. So I started interviewing people. But you started interviewing people your own age, but you had your family, right. you had other people that you were interviewing. Were they reluctant to speak on tape? Well, of course, my mother always tells me, she uses the Arabic word fadiha, which means like you embarrassed me all the time with when you put, turn the camera on. But they love it. They love being <laughs> superstars in their little, you know, mini superstar world, sure. So it's I mean, easy to get them to talk? Easy to absolutely. get people to talk? Absolutely. I think so. I mean, I have it. I don't really, I sort of leave the camera on and, and sort of pretend like it's in the background and try and engage the, the subject. And then how did you find these people to interview? Basically it started with my circle of friends and family and then it's sort of, it was like satellite, you know, people um. that they were, that they knew or, or were connected with, yes. And what were, you, what were you asking these people? I was basically asking them how they feel connected to their, um, to their native culture or, the, you know, their parents' culture. Do they speak the language? I know for Armenians, language is very important and they want to hold on to the heritage by keeping the language alive and then kind of, you know, how they exist within this country. And you got all different kinds of answers. Right, right. There's one girl, she's a, you know, 14-year-old girl. Her parents were moved from the so former Soviet Republic of Georgia. She doesn't speak Armenian. She only speaks Russian and English, but she says, I'm Armenian. You know? I know, I heard, I saw yeah. that on the film, and she says, I'm Armenian, but she doesn't, just as you right. said, you said, do you speak? And she said, no. Well, do, do we consider those people Armenian if they don't speak? Absolutely. Why I not? Do. Of course. <laughs> I, I mean, consider myself Armenian. Right. I don't speak or I can't write. Can but you it's write part or of you. read? Very slowly, unfortunately. <laughs> I, you know, it takes me 10 minutes to read one page. But, but I noticed yeah. you had your mother. Your mother was reading Arabic and she right. was reading uh, Armenian and telling you. And then you had subtitles under different mm -hmm. uh, parts of the, yeah. the language. Yeah. I mean, I think for, for me, it's something where you can't negate one culture or the other. You have to sort of no notice that they're going to mix eventually. There will be integration and there, you know, you have to sort of deal with both or multiple cultures. How did you, um, how long did it take you to make the film? It took about two and a half, almost three years because I was on my own basically. I see. Yeah, getting a lot of, you know, feedback and help from my professors. That's what I was going to ask you. What right. kind of, uh, not the feedback from your professors, but what kind of equipment did you use? I used the lowest of the lows, like one of those <laughs> the soccer moms use for to really? videotape their kids. Yeah, it was like a handy cam, high eight camera. But yeah. but maybe because you're so adept at the computer that you could make it look good. Yeah, well, no, I don't. I mean, I think the film comes out. It, it's a little soft, the video, the high eight video, which actually makes it look less like one. You know those hard videotapes that you see. So um, I think that it actually helped. What about so. the music? The music, um, my father uh, is a composer. Did he, and did he compose He the didn't music? compose the music, but um, he has his own recording company called Meg Recordings. And um, he recorded the Chilingirian Quartet, which is based in London. And this is Gomidas music. He was uh, an Armenian monk who traveled all over and picked up folk songs. So did I he write the folk songs, Gomidas? Or Gomidas, did he, just he sort of, he sort of, took them from the, the people uh -huh. and kind of, you know. And it's a very yeah. traditional yes. Armenian sort of music. Yes, yes, definitely. And so he used those? Yes. And um, basically I asked my father, I said, you know, do you mind if I use one of these songs? And it's, you know, w woven through the film. And then what was your mother's artistic bent? She's, um, she's been an English teacher and a professor all of her life, um, but she's a writer. She's, you know, a oh, writer and a translator. I so, see. yeah, she's very I I adept to the language, language side of things. You know, the one thing you talk about, the beautiful Armenians, we have Armenians from so many different mm -hmm. countries. Did that yeah. make some kind of impact when you were doing this? It did, absolutely. And, um, and I actually traveled outside of the States did for you? this film. Yeah, I went to Lebanon and I went to Jordan. My grandmother, my late grandmother, lived in Jordan. So I went and I interviewed her. She plays a big part in it. Because the film is also about family history and memory and how you hold on to your culture through 
your memories, basically. So because yeah. when the Armen a lot of Armenians left, pushed yes. out of um, Armenia, the Turkish massacres, the massacring of the Armenian people by the Turks, and they ended up in places like you're talking about, right. Amman, uh, Lebanon, Lebanon, Aleppo, exactly. Syria. Where else? Yes. Argentina, all Everywhere. over. I mean, you know, some people say you'll find an Armenian in every town, you know, like there's, they, we've gone all over the place. So, so it's yeah. hard to keep your identity then. Did you right. learn a way in this when you're uh, talking to people? I think basically you just have to remember, you know, the, you have to remember the past but also keep looking forward, if that makes sense. And you... Um, of course, want to continue making films. What's next on your plate? What's next? I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of, I'm in the process of, of a couple of different projects, and the most important and the dearest to my heart is I want to make a film about um, learning Arabic because, you know, in my, in Beautiful Armenians, there's a scene where my mother's trying to teach me Arabic, and I'm also noticing that there's a rise in the study of Arabic in the States for various reasons. So that's hopefully going to be my next project. It's very it's just starting out. That's great. Yeah. Tamar, thank you so much you. for being with us today, and thank you for watching us on the Joan Quinn Profiles. Keep riding to 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles, 90017. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Yeah.